Hello and welcome back to Tutoring with Gavin. In this series of videos, I'll be exploring classic novels that are studied at advanced or degree level. In this video, I'll be analyzing the novel The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. When Fitzgerald died 15 years after the publication of The Great Gatsby, his novel had only sold 120 copies. By a stroke of luck, or perhaps genius, the US military gave free copies to their military personnel in 1944 and suddenly the novel became a big hit. Many literary critics and scholars now consider it one of the great modern American novels. Fitzgerald was born into an upper middle class family in Minnesota, but was primarily raised in New York. He attended Princeton University, but dropped out in 1917 to join the army. While stationed in Alabama, he fell in love with the rich socialite Zelda Sayer. Although she initially rejected him due to his financial situation, Zelda agreed to marry Fitzgerald after he had published the commercially successful This Side of Paradise in 1920. In the novel, Gatsby is rejected by Daisy because of his lack of wealth and class, leading to a transformation in his personality, status and wealth in order to win her affections. The setting of this story during the Roaring Twenties juxtaposes narcissistic wealth and abject poverty with a sudden outburst of corruption thrown in for good measure. After the First World War, Americans found more freedom, time and disposable income and witnessed economic expansion and urbanization. However, in the novel, Fitzgerald presents a society in perpetual motion, as if spiritually lost at sea. The reader follows Nick's unraveling of the mythic Jay Gatsby. The narrator has some sympathy for Gatsby's devotion and sacrifice for Daisy, but Gatsby's tragic flaw is his inability to see Daisy for what she really is. His nostalgia and romanticism cloud his usually impeccable instinct for a business opportunity. Nick Carraway acts as a moral compass for this materialistic, careless and shallow society. And yet he's also sometimes hypocritical and too easily manipulated by the rich to be completely reliable. He is selective in his moral judgment, mesmerized temporarily by the glow of success. This world appears to him on the one hand as dreamlike and surreal, but on the other as grotesque, dislocated and ultimately hollow. As Gatsby's next door neighbor, he is the perfect witness to events as they unfold. But he's also used by others and becomes a facilitator for Gatsby's obsession with Daisy. As readers, we pick up on Gatsby's fake persona, with his affected English accent and extravagant wardrobe, and his habit of calling everyone old sport. Just as America is reinventing itself, Gatsby also rises from the ashes of obscurity and poverty, from Gats to Gatsby, and produces an image of success that others want to taste. He comes from nothing, but creates a mysterious illusion that feeds the desires of the American dream. Gatsby's library is full of important books that have never been read, but are on show to provide the appearance of an educated man. These unopened books symbolize Gatsby's secretive past that he keeps locked up from those who want to read him but Nick seems to like him nonetheless, perhaps because he is no more fake than the others around him, perhaps empathizing for Gatsby's desire to fit into a social class that will never really accept him. His comments at the start of the novel are important. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in the world haven't had the advantages that you've had. Nick has less empathy, however, for other characters like Myrtle Wilson, who changes her costume in chapter two, and with the influence of the dress, her personality had also undergone a change. Her laughter, her gestures, her assertions became more violently affected moment by moment. Nick also becomes irritated by the wild rumors and blatant lies that fly around in social circles with troubling ease. Fake news seems to be a leisure activity, and then there is the anti-Semitism of Tom and others in his social circle. Consumerism is everywhere in the novel. Used cars are traded in from new models to enhance the status of those who believe you are what you own. In the same way Gatsby trades his old self for a new glowing identity. Wilson's car workshop is not valued for taking care of old cars. Instead, new cars quickly replace the old, just as new ideas replace the old. Change is coming fast, with electricity and telephones, and this is influencing how society functions. Daisy seems more emotionally attached to Gatsby's shirts than any human being, including her own daughter. They're such beautiful shirts, she sobbed, her voice muffled in the thick folds. It makes me sad because I've never seen such, such beautiful shirts before. In the 1920s, there was a public fascination with bootleggers and gangsters which ignored the brutality and cruelty of their criminal enterprises, creating a sense of celebrity because of the clothes they wore, their lifestyle, 
wealth and power. The character of Mayor Wolfsheim could have been modelled on Arnold Rothstein, who was well known at the time the novel was written. Rothstein was a skillful fixer for various mobsters and he met a violent end in 1928, shot dead after years of running an illegal empire in bootlegging, gambling and loan sharking. Like many gangsters of that time, Jay Gatsby's rise and fall from notoriety is sudden and violent. But it seems more shocking because rather than gangsters, it is his blind devotion to Daisy that causes his bloody downfall. The American dream is rooted in the Declaration of Independence, which proclaims that all men are created equal, with the right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. From James Truslow Adams' definition in 1931, life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone, with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement, regardless of social class or circumstance of birth. Ultimately, Nick reflects that just as Gatsby's dream of Daisy is corrupted by money and dishonesty, the American dream of happiness and self-improvement through hard work has also disintegrated into the mere pursuit of wealth and materialism, with a growing divide between the haves and the have-nots. The era of dreaming, both Gatsby's dream and the American dream, is over. The obsession with appearance and illusion, rather than reality and social justice, is the tragedy of the American dream. For Fitzgerald, the illusion of glitter and success is fraudulent, while the dreams of the impoverished and invisible are turned to ashes. The emptiness and futility of a time that could not last, which he could see collapsing, and within four years it did. The whole illusion of power and pleasure dissolved overnight with the Wall Street crash. Ultimately, Gatsby is part of the illusion of the American dream. His wealth is corrupt, and he uses it for selfish pleasures rather than for good. Daisy's infatuation with Gatsby is based on his appearance and wealth. She loves his shirts and his style, revealing her superficiality, which he fails to recognise. This shows the frailty of their relationship. Gatsby tries to buy love with his wealth and has little to offer without it. The abrupt juxtaposition of imagery is symbolic of the contrasting worlds of this novel. Wilson, mingling immediately with the cement colour of the walls, an invisible cuckold from an invisible class of people. The affluent are full of glittering, shimmering colour. Daisy's face tipped sideways beneath a three-cornered lavender hat looked at me with a bright, ecstatic smile. The setting for the rich is also in stark contrast to that of the poor. The lights grow brighter as the earth lurches away from the sun, and now the orchestra is playing yellow cocktail music, and the opera of voices pitches a key higher. The constant flicker and ceaseless glints of light represent the modern and the new, which have become a distraction and an attraction to the materialistic, artificial world of Gatsby. In contrast, the poor community has the faded, bespectacled eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, painted on an old advertising billboard overlooking the Valley of Ashes, perhaps viewing America as a moral wasteland. Just visible from Gatsby's West Egg Lawn, the green light represents Gatsby's hopes and dreams for the future. Gatsby associates it with Daisy, and in Chapter 1 he reaches towards it in the darkness, perhaps as a guiding light, but reflecting how Daisy is now within his reach. While the three main female characters in the story are all flawed, Daisy is praised by Nick for her appearance. Nick describes her low, thrilling voice. It was the kind of voice that the ear follows up and down as if each speech is an arrangement of notes that will never be played again. She's like a silver screen movie star that is best adored from the auditorium because when you get to know her, she cannot live up to the manufactured image. Interestingly, the villains in the story turn out to be the privileged elite of New York. Nick sums up his ambivalence to them when he says, I was within and without, simultaneously enchanted and repelled by the inexhaustible variety of life. The beauty of this novel is in the writing, the observation and energy that reflect the restlessness of the characters and time. Despite the decay of spirituality and goodness, Fitzgerald captures the excitement and chaos of the 1920s in a way that is initially magical but inevitably surreal. He shines a light on a memorable moment in American history, breaking through the surface to illuminate a soulless America. We well, hope this video has been helped to you in your studies. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel so that we can continue to make these videos in the future. Until next time.